Oh, I made it so easy. This beautiful view here to be unaware about the rise of semi-fascism in the United States. I mean, are you on guard for the rise of semi-fascism right now in the United States as we look towards Sydney Central Business District? Here's Jonathan Shade, how to make a semi-fascist party. How to make a semi-fascist party. Who... Semi-fascist, I mean, come on, that's, uh, that's a tad strong, isn't it? I mean, fascism was a particular movement of a particular time and place, meaning between World War I and World War II in, in Europe. And its quint, quintessential expression was in Italy. Uh, whether or not uh, Germany was fascist, uh, Germany was racist, and uh, fascism isn't racist. So Italian fascism wasn't anti-Semitic until until the uh, Germans took over and made it so. Knew it could be this easy. Written by Jonathan Chait for New York Magazine. Do you realize how Narrated easy it can be? Narrated by Jonathan Davis. In mid-September, I attended the National Conservatism Conference in Miami, where Republican politicians, right-wing thought leaders, and various party apparatchiks had gathered to articulate their vision of the conservative movement's future. The national conservatives are only one faction vying to define the Republican agenda, but in a short period of time, they have sharpened their focus and expanded their influence, and the conference gave them a forum to display the dominant position their ideas have achieved on the right. Kevin Roberts, the president of the Heritage Foundation and one of the conference's speakers, recognized their triumph when he announced from the stage, I come not to invite national conservatives to join our conservative movement, but to acknowledge the plain truth that heritage is already part of yours. What exactly the... Okay, so this idea that if you're concerned about heritage, that somehow that makes you semi-fascist, is absurd. <laughs> right? Judaism is concerned about heritage. I, I'm sure that uh, Islam is concerned about heritage. There are parts of Christianity that are concerned about heritage. I mean, what, what national group, you know, what form of nationalism is not concerned about heritage? Like Israel, I would suspect, is concerned about heritage. Like, how, how exactly is that uh, fascist? movement entails has been the subject of a long-running debate largely obscured by the figure of Donald Trump. When Joe Biden warned in August of the rise of semi-fascist ideas on the right, even many Trump critics suggested that the president had gotten carried away. Now, there is an equivalent to this among uh, Republicans. They're always talking about not always. Some of them are talking about, you know, the communists, the woke communists have taken power. We have to resist the rise of uh, woke communists. So that's a hyperbolic rhetoric on both sides. CNN's John Avalon said this rhetoric was not befitting a president. Larry Hogan, among the most staunchly anti-Trump Republicans left in the GOP, scolded Biden for his divisive rhetoric. The implication was that it was a miscategorization of Trump and a smear of his followers to suggest that his anti-democratic behavior in any way resembled an ideology, let alone the fascist regimes of the 20th century. And it is true. So this is Sydney Harbour Park. Absolutely gorgeous. We were looking there towards uh, CBD, Sydney Harbour National Park, Nielsen Park. So... I was just looking up you know, things to do and see in Sydney with a strong healthy preference for that which is free and this was in the top 20 list 